Welcome everybody to this service this morning and I do pray that we will all be truly blessed as we share in this time together. Today is a very special day in the life of the parish as we have an ordination service this morning where Ashwin Puden from St George's White River and David Selala from St Paul's in Mashasheng are going to be ordained as deacons. And we do just pray for both of them that their future ministries would be truly blessed by God as they take on this new role as servants in God's church. The Lord be with you. Blessed be God, who forgives all our sins. Let us pray. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let us confess our sins against God and our neighbour. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another 
and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth, that we have sinned by our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the selfishness, hypocrisy and impatience of our lives. Hear our confession, O Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. Hear our confession, O Lord. Our apathy and indifference, and our acceptance of oppression. Hear our confession, O Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Hear our confession, O Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us, accept our repentance, O Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favourably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of Christ's resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The Collect for the Second Sunday in Lent. Let us pray. God of the Covenant, you promised mercy and hope for all. Gather us to yourself in tenderness, so that, assured of your faithfulness, we may live to your praise and glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. God calls Isaiah to be a prophet. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He was sitting on his throne high and exalted, and his robe filled the whole temple. Round him flaming creatures were standing, each of which had six wings. Each creature covered its face with two wings, and its body with two, and used the other two for flying. They were calling out to each other, Holy, 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 the Lord Almighty is holy. His glory fills the whole world. The sound of their voices made the foundation of the temple shake, and the temple itself was filled with smoke. I said, there is no hope for me. I am doomed because every word that passes my lips is sinful, and I live among a people whose every word is sinful. And yet, with my own eyes, I have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the creatures flew down to me, carrying a burning coal that he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips with the burning coal and said, This has touched your lips, and now your guilt is gone, and your sins are forgiven. Then I heard the Lord say, Whom shall I send? Who will be our messenger? I answered, I will go, send me. 
Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 119, verses 33 to 38. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will honor it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law, that I may keep it with my whole heart. Guide me in the path of your commandments, for therein is my delight. Incline my heart to your commands, and not to selfish gain. Turn away my eyes from looking on vanities, as I walk in your way, give me life. Make good your promise to your servant, the promise that endures for all who fear you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12 reading verses 1 to 12. Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. That is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is in serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Hear the word of the Lord. The Gospel reading. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to St. Mark. Chapter 10, beginning to read at the 35th verse. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? he asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink, or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will drink the cup I drink, and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. 
For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of Christ. We pray for the people of Ukraine. Let us pray. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children, at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. The sermon today is going to be preached at an ordination service where two candidates are going to be ordained as deacons. And if we look at the readings that are given to us for the ordination service, they give us a picture of what God requires of his followers, and that is, of course, a call to humble service. In a short while, the bishop uh, will be reading the charge to the deacons, which starts as follows. My brothers, every Christian is called to follow Jesus Christ, serving God the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit. God now calls you to a special ministry of humble service. In essence, a deacon is called to be a servant of all, modeling his or her life after the example that Jesus has given us. The classic example of humble service that I'm sure we are all aware of is when Jesus stripped, put a towel around himself and knelt down to wash the feet of his disciples. This was the theme of the ordination retreat for Davy and for Ashwin, and uh, it was entitled The Theology of the Two Basins. I just want to share the passage from John 13 that talks about the washing of the feet. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. We all know the story very well, and we are going to reenact the scene in a few weeks' time on Maundy Thursday. This was a work that was reserved for the lowest of the servants to do. It was certainly not something that a rabbi did for his disciples. Something of great significance in the story of Jesus' actions is that he washed the feet of all the disciples, including Judas Iscariot, who had already decided to betray Jesus. Everyone was treated with the same respect and love. The second basin that we look at is the basin that Pontius Pilate used at the trial of Jesus in Jerusalem. This also occurs in the time that we call Holy Week, the commemoration of the last week in the life of Christ. Pilate had wanted to set Jesus free because he found no fault with him, but the crowds were crying for Jesus to be crucified. So what was Pilate to do? We read in Matthew 27 verse 24, When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. Pilate's use of the basin to wash his hands is a selfish and self-serving action, 
where he was only concerned about his own reputation and security, and wanted to take the comfortable and easy way out of a very difficult situation. Two basins with very different stories. The question that is posed to us is, which basin will we choose? Looking at the readings for today in Isaiah, we read about the call that the prophet experienced as God called him to a life of service. It was not an easy time in the life of the people of Israel, as King Uzziah had just died. He was a good king and was obedient to God. Now Isaiah is called to step in as God's spokesperson for a people who are very troubled. In our passage for today, six whole chapters into the prophecies of Isaiah, the temple prophet, something changed, and it changed radically. It wasn't a change in society, as Isaiah had been working for. Something else changed in Isaiah's heart. Take a look at the passage. Isaiah was do, doing his job one day, just going about his business, when we are told that he saw the Lord. God was holy beyond any human conception of holy. And right in that moment, Isaiah's entire life changed. He saw the Lord, and in doing so, he also saw a whole new framework for life. Going about critiquing a society desperately in need of critique seems almost secondary given the reality of Isaiah's vision. You see, in that moment when he saw the Lord, he also saw that society was not the only thing in need of redemption. Isaiah himself totally and desperately needed reform. God was all about the busyness of changing things. But God wanted to start right here with Isaiah's own heart. When we look at the issue of our call from God, we recognize instantly and powerfully that it doesn't matter if we've been part of a community of faith since the day we were born, or if this is the first time you've ever set foot in any church at all. What matters is whether you have seen the Lord, whether or not the Spirit of God has taken hold of your heart, taken your hand, and invited you to embark on the grand adventure of following God. Many of us here today have experienced the call of God, and we have been changed by God's Holy Spirit. I believe that this is what has happened in the lives of Davy and Ashwin as well. They have answered a call from God to enter into this new form of ministry, and in the same way that Isaiah cried out that he was not worthy, we all need to recognize the fact that we too are not worthy. Our call can only happen in the strength and support of God's Holy Spirit. In our reading from Romans this morning, Paul talks about being a living sacrifice. The Apostle Paul is someone who could certainly talk of a profound call that was placed on him by God. Remember the incredible transformation that took place on the road to Damascus when he encountered the risen Lord Jesus. He was completely changed and turned his life around to focus on serving God with every fibre of his being. In this letter, Paul is spurring the Roman Christians on. He's like a coach who wants the greatest possible performance out of his team. He exhorts them, he calls them, by the mercy of God, to present their bodies as a living sacrifice. The idea of sacrifice, of course, has been around as long as humanity has. Sacrifice always figured into human worship of God, whether that God is the one true God or any other deity worshipped by people. Of course, the ultimate example for us of sacrifice is when Jesus was crucified. The ultimate act of love that God has shown to us is central to our understanding of the Christian faith. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus, we are offered freedom from all that destroyed our relationship with God, and we are resto restored as God's beloved. During the Eucharist service, when we say the first Eucharistic prayer, we say that we celebrate before you the one perfect sacrifice of Christ our Lord. That is the way St. Paul understood Jesus' crucifixion, as a perfect sacrifice, as the ultimate act of atonement for the sins of the whole world. To Paul and to most of the modern church, Jesus is hanging on the cross 
was the perfected version of an animal without blemish being laid on the altar in the temple. Just as Jesus said that he came to fulfill the law of Moses, so also his sacrifice was the fulfillment of sacrificial acts in worship of God. So when St. Paul tells the Romans that they are to present their bodies to God as a holy and living sacrifice, he didn't mean that they should ritually be killed in the name of God. Jesus did that one time for all of us. No, Paul meant that we were to offer our soma, our hearts, our souls, our minds and our bodies, our entire being to God. In our Eucharistic prayers, we offer to God a sacrifice of our prayers and praise. That's clearly part of what Paul was talking about, but not all that he was talking about. Today, here and now, we are still called by God, just as the church in Rome was more than 2,000 years ago, to offer to God everything we have as sacrificial offerings for our sins and for our blessings. You see, true sacrifice has no place for selfish pride and a sense of our own self-importance. This comes through very clearly in our gospel reading for today. The two disciples, James and John, who are brothers, ask Jesus for this very big favor. They want the premium seats, the ones right beside Jesus, when he finally is enthroned as king. They have a strong appetite for prestige and power. The other ten disciples are no better. They become angry at James and John because they also want the best seats. They also want prestige and power. All twelve disciples actually miss the point about the kingship of Jesus. Although he has told them repeatedly of his approaching execution and resurrection, they still don't get it. Yet the failure of the twelve to understand can be for us a cause for hope. Because each of us is sometimes blind to what discipleship requires. Jesus didn't give up on his original twelve, and he does not give up on us. He continues to set forth the upside-down way of his kingdom, and invites us to walk where he has walked. One way in which his kingdom appears upside-down in regard to conventional expectations is, of course, in the area of leadership. Now, when we start talking about leadership, when we say the word leadership, people very often try to close their ears. They say they're not a leader or that they are a leader no more. Each of us is invited repeatedly to leadership, sometimes in modest, informal ways we barely notice, and sometimes perhaps in ways that involve titles and prominence and the burden of being a public person. This is the situation for Davy and Ashwin with their ordination today. Whatever form our leadership takes, let this be the characteristic of it, that we follow the example Jesus offers us of a leadership that is servant leadership. Jesus claims the role of servant by word and deed. He says in the Gospel reading for today, He has come not to be served, but to serve. And of course, at his final meal before his death, he scandalizes his followers by kneeling before them to wash their feet as though he is their servant and not their Lord. Basin theology, what an intriguing thought. Life has two choices, one of giving your all to a situation, the other is avoiding all responsibility. The basins mentioned in the story of Jesus and the basin of Holy Week are diametrically opposed. Jesus took the basin in order to humble himself and serve others. Pilate used the basin to shirk his responsibility. Our challenge is how do we use our basins? Do we try to cleanse ourselves of responsibility? Or do we, like Jesus, use them to be servants to others? Ashwin and Davy, and all of us here today, we are called to take upon ourselves the humble servant mentality of Jesus and to follow his example as we journey through life. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I might have the grace to let you be my servant too. on a journey we are brothers on the road we are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load
We come now to the celebration of the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Worship and praise belong to you, maker of light and darkness. Your wisdom draws beauty from chaos, brings a harvest out of sorrow, calls out to those who have lost their way, and leads them safely home. God of grace and glory, you made us, you seek and find us, we are your own. In Christ your Son, enemies are reconciled, debts forgiven, and strangers are made welcome. Your Spirit frees us to live as sons and daughters, secure in your family. We who by Christ's power seek to follow the way of the cross, sharing the joy of Christ's obedience, now offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving are yours, most loving and gracious God, for Jesus Christ in whom the world is reconciled. He is the Lamb of God who takes away our sin and gathers us into the abundant new life of your forgiveness. Lifted on the cross, his suffering and forgiveness span the gulf our sins had made. Through Christ's dark struggle, death is shadowed in victory. Christ the firstborn freely offered himself as the Passover lamb for the sins of the whole world. By his loving sacrifice, he inaugurates the reign of eternal light and abundant life. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. Before he was given up to suffering and death, at a meal recalling the night of Israel's Passover release, Jesus took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his friends saying, Take, eat, this is my body. It is broken for you. Do this to remember me. After supper he took the cup. Again he offered you thanks. And gave it to them saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that all sin may be forgiven. Do this to remember me. We now obey your son's command. We recall Christ's passion and death. We celebrate Christ's resurrection. We look for the coming of Christ's kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts. With them we offer ourselves a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, 
and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon the bread and wine we offer, that, overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son. By your grace, open our ears to hear you calling us home. Arouse in our hearts the desire to, to return to you, and kindle within us the fire of your love that renews us for the service of Christ's kingdom. Help us to live and work to your praise and glory. Make us grow together in unity and love until at last your creation is renewed and restored. Then bring us with Mary, the mother of our Lord, and all the hosts of heaven to our true eternal home where we may praise you forever. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against you. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Come to this table, not because we must, but because we may. Not to testify that we are righteous, but that we sincerely love our Lord Jesus Christ and desire to be his true disciples. Not because we are strong, but because we need strength. Not because we have any claim on heaven's rewards, but because in our frailty and sin we stand in constant need of heaven's mercy and help. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ broken for us. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for us. Amen.
The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. As you have fed us in this sacrament, so give us thankful hearts to receive the grace of this Holy Communion and eager wills to follow in Christ's blessed footsteps. In his tender mercy's sake. Amen. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. God bless Africa, protect our children, transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. May Christ our Lord give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, to take up your cross, and to follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So let us go forth into the world, following the path of Christ. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>